So hello everyone, uh, good morning, good evening. I'll be giving a presentation today on Open Data Cube and Open Earth Alliance. Uh, my name is Brian Killo. I work for NASA and I support the CIOS Systems Engineering Office. I, I lead that office full time. Uh, you can read more about my bio and background uh, online and happy to be here today to tell you about these two topics. So we'll start first with the Open Data Cube. Uh, many of you are aware of the Open Data Cube, have likely have heard about it, but just wanted to repeat what we feel is the long-term vision for all of this. We would like to see a global network of regional interoperable cubes around the world where we share tools and algorithms between them. Uh, we're starting to see this come about, uh, certainly with the work that's been done in Africa, but hopefully in time, this may be the direction of where this all ends up. Uh, the impact that we've made is quite significant. Uh, our impact to date is about 106 countries we've touched with in some way uh, with the data cube. We have a number of countries where uh, ODC is operational. We're in development in 19 countries, plus if you add in more countries in the Africa and the Digital Earth Africa initiative, uh, the list continues to grow and then there's some others expressing interest. So quite a large and broad impact uh, for the Open Data Cube. It's great to see that it has grown so rapidly. Uh, from the beginning, our philosophy has always been open source. And so the code remains open source, everything is free and open. And our core code that we've developed over time, we're, what we're doing now is moving this into uh, the open source geospatial foundation called OSGO. This is a home for many open source software tools. And so we felt it was a logical next move for the Open Data Cube and we're making uh, that happen now. This will give us more visibility and open us up to a broader community of open source software developers. We're also making a transition in taking the African Regional Data Cube prototype, which was just five countries, and many of you know that there's a Digital Earth Africa initiative, which is the entire continent. In It's gonna take us a bit longer, probably through the end of this year, we're gonna continue to do this transition but we're moving data, we're uh, moving users, and all of this is coming together quite nicely. And of course, with the recent global issues, uh, things are a little bit slower than usual. And then most recently, we've started some discussions for an America's data cube. So this uh, will support Central and South America, as well as the Caribbean. For those of you that want more information, you can check out the ODC website, we have a GitHub link for the software if you want to download that, and we have a user interface demo online. So feel free to check that out. So some new exciting activities uh, just to bring you up to date on, on what's happening and what we're working on. The most recent one is a Amazon sandbox. We're, we're going to call this the Landsat AWS sandbox. This will allow the open data cube infrastructure and algorithms to connect to the new Landsat Collection 2 data when it gets released later this year into the Amazon cloud. This will be a one of a kind situation that allow users to run analyses anywhere in the world and it uh, could help us with training and capacity building. And so really the, the analogy here would be Google Earth Engine. You go to Google Earth Engine, you have a data cube essentially for the globe, various data sets, and you can run scripts. In this particular case, uh, we'll have the global Landsat archive and be able to run a number of uh, powerful algorithms on that data. And you can even um, program your own if you wanna try out some other new things. The next thing is the CIOS Earth Analytics Interoperability Lab. This is a collaboration between my office and CIOS Wigus, the Information Systems Group. What we've decided we need is we need an interoperability test bed, a place where we can test analysis ready data sets, where we can support some of these newer CIOS initiatives like coast and disasters. And we can also use this for the 
uh, Knowledge Hub. We think it would be ideal for the Geo Knowledge Hub. The next thing is the Sentinel-1 data pipeline. Um, it's very difficult to get Sentinel-1 data cubes and interact with process Sentinel-1 data. Uh, in order to do that, you have to go to the Copernicus Hub or other data sources. You have to download GRD data or SLC data, huge data products. You have to process them and have the knowledge to do so, and then you have to uh, analyze them. What we're going to do is build a prototype that will enable a pipeline where we can create a Sentinel-1 radar data cube anywhere in the world and perform analyses, and we've developed a number of algorithms to help support that. I think this will be a really big advantage moving forward, and nothing like this exists right now. And then finally, we're working with Google. I've got a collaboration with the Global Partnership on Sustainable Development Data, GPSDD. Uh, we'll be installing the Open Data Cube uh, on a Google Cloud and utilizing the Google Earth Engine data sets for analyses. So really what this is is ODC connected to the Earth Engine data sets. And this will yield an alternative to Amazon and really give us some powerful connections. So in the end, if you take analysis-ready data, the work that we're doing and the, the uh, technology of Open Data Cube, pulling that together with analytics and applications, I like to think there's infinite possibilities. So some of the new applications, to, to bring you up to date on what we're doing in applications, uh, we've been working with Digital Earth Africa to develop a number of new notebooks. Uh, many of these can support beginners from the very beginning, uh, develop for training and capacity building. And, and in general, we have found that these Python notebooks are really becoming quite common in the user community. We're seeing lots of people use these. It seems to be the go-to way to interact with satellite data. Yes, it does take a little bit of Python programming knowledge, but not a extreme level. The, the barrier for entry is not so bad. I, I often tell people I'm not a programmer, but I know how to do this now, and I can run Jupyter Notebooks, and I can actually make my own code and run things, and I self-taught you know, within six months or a year of playing around with this stuff, so it's really not that bad. So we've made a number of revisions to our DataCube application library. This is the master set of common application algorithms. You can see the list there, things like mosaics and water time series and vegetation. And all of those algorithms are what's gonna be available on the new Landsat sandbox. As well as you can find these in GitHub. If you want to download them and check out the open source software and how they're written, feel free to do so. We are also working on a number of new applications that are under development. So things like shapefile masking uh, mining detection, weather and soil moisture, uh, Sentinel-1, ALOS, uh, these are both radar data sets, the Aster Digital Elevation Model, Geomedium Mosaics, and Land Change with PyCCD. So there's lots of other algorithms that are under development and testing that uh, really show us some exciting opportunities for the future. And then finally, uh, we're not forgetting about the sustainable development goals. This is a, a focus of what we're doing in many ways. So we're writing algorithms to directly support three, three SDGs, the water, the urban, and land degradation. I wouldn't say any one of these algorithms is an end-to-end -end concept for doing this, but I do believe it could have significant impact uh, for users and allow them to do a large portion of what is necessary for reporting. And, and I just see it as something that could be part of the toolkit. And then finally today, I wanna to tell you about Open Earth Alliance. This is a new initiative that was just recently submitted in the last week, actually, to the GEO community as a GEO community activity. The intent here is to support open technology solutions. So open data and open software with a hope of improving the end user impact. And our group in the Open Data Cube community thinks that this is the next logical step for where we need to go to expand the impact of the things that we've begun. Right now, it, without OEA, we're limited by the contributions of the partner organizations, which are three or four space agencies that have come together and said, we like what we're doing at Open Data Cube, but we're using our own money. 
to try to do the best that we can. But we think that there's more interest from outside. And in order to do this, we needed an entity that could enable participation from a broader set of contributors. So we want to focus on DataCube solutions, although this thing would be technology ag agnostic, so it could be more than data cubes. We want to have an algorithm hub, so we want to share open source software and algorithms. We want to have an analysis hub similar to the one that I uh, showed you earlier. So we hope that the OEA will give us improved flexibility and agility, uh, be able to look at rapid changes in technology and optimizing what we're able to do. And we also could have this potential to get donor funding in through the WMO GEO Trust Fund. And that's why we're doing this collaboration with GEO for the Open Earth uh, Alliance. So uh, it's, just rel it's relatively new, just getting kicked off as this community activity with the intent that in time it, it uh, can grow and hopefully will enable contributions from others to come together for a common cause. And then uh, finally, I'll say if you have any questions about what's been presented today and would like information, uh, you see my email, feel free to find me there. We have a Twitter at OpenDataCube is our Twitter for the OpenDataCube. And with that, I'll end and thank you for your time today.